Okay, I guess we can start. Can we? Yeah? Okay. So, um, I don't know. I'll be standing here, walking around, doing whatever. Um, hello, everyone. As you all know, pixel art as a style witnessed the revival in the early 2010s. Thanks to the indie hits like Fez, Hotline Miami, and of course Minecraft. And uh, I believe you all heard about it. But what is exactly pixel art? Why do people choose this particular style in their works and game development, especially lately? And it's very popular among indie developers now. And uh, what notions, what uh, purposes of pixel art there, are, there is? Uh, we'll talk about it today. And I really hope you'll enjoy it. But first, let me introduce myself. Uh -huh. My name is Arvidis Brasdeikis. I'm a 2D artist, UI designer, and occasionally a short film director. But nobody talks about it. Um, I had a chance to work for uh, own services for several uh, different AAA franchises, like Mass Effect, League of Legends, Dragon Age. Uh, you can also see my art in the smaller independent productions like Movie Studio Story and the upcoming horror adventure game The Long Reach. I am currently working as a 2D artist in a company called Game Insight. We are one of the uh, biggest uh, game developers of social and mid-core games in Europe, but my particular talk won't be concerning our uh, direct games, and more about art and uh, game development in general. So, can you hear me all right? Yeah? Okay, great. What? Too loud? Okay. Is this good? All right. So, I really do love pixel art. Ever since I was a little kid, I saw my father playing Warcraft 2 uh, from Blizzard Games, and I was absolutely mesmerized by the art direction, the beautiful environments, wonderful, wonderful, colorful designs and beautiful animations. I was so, so pumped for it. I was influenced by it. Uh, the way that I tried to do something on my own. I launched MS Paint and started doing my own art with questionable results. Uh, yeah, But I hope I got better. So I hope I did. Um, as well as many other people of my generation in their 20s, maybe 30s, um, that grew up on essentially the same types, the same library of PC and console games of 80s and 90s, respectfully. And um, today, these people are of the age of creation, and uh, these people are interested in game development, and they want to convey this feeling of enjoyment, the feeling of, I don't know, marvelous, is everything okay? The marvelous feeling of enjoying the game when they were kids. That's why, uh, one, two, three, is everything okay? One, two, three, okay. Yeah, better? Right. So uh, they want to convey this marvelous feeling of enjoyment they had when they were kids, when they were playing these games, and they choose pixel art as their, um, particular style to convey this particular feeling. So today I'm going to talk about several things. I want to talk about questions of what is pixel art, what pixel art is for, why do people use pixel art, and how to make it, and how to make it good, preferably. And in order to talk about something, we need to define it. We need to uh, understand uniformly, understand what it is about. And pixel art is a technique of 2D digital painting where image is edited on a pixel level with a smaller resolution canvas. So I guess everything is fine, everything is okay. Uh, 2D, big pixels, small canvas, everything is cool. So pixel art is easy. You take huge image, you scale it down, then you scale it back up again, and you receive pixel art. Yeah? No? Well, this isn't particularly pixel art, and I'm not going to stand here and say and question the definition on what is and what isn't art, but th because that's not the question. The question is, um, how can we make art the way we want it? So what I would include in the definition is the deliberate pixel placement. What it is? What do I mean exactly? 
is that uh, if you're a line artist, right, each and every line is placed in a particular place. And if you're a colorist, each uh, shade of a particular color is chosen deliberately in order to convey the idea or to create the whole image. That's why in pixel art, each and every pixel is placed in a particular place in order for you to illustrate your ideas and your designs properly. That's why this automated process isn't exactly pixel art, but something created from scratch is. Okay, so I guess you got the definitions, what, what is pixel art, right? And what it is for particular. Many people confuse pixel art with 8-bit style or retro style. Many people think it's the same thing, but it really is not. Because uh, there are many facets to the technique. There are many ways we can express ourselves through pixel art. And today I'm going to talk about the ideas behind this particular technique and what we want to do with it. So talking about these three things, these three purposes of pixel art is... Of course, I cannot, uh, cannot not mention nostalgia. Nostalgia is the primary factor we do pixel art in the first place because we all were kids. We all were kids. We uh, want to reminisce about pixel art and about the ways it influenced us um, many, many years ago. So, one of the things we can illustrate with pixel art is nostalgic feeling. And this particular example here, Shovel Knight. Uh, from Yacht Club Games, uh, the game of 2014 is an 8-bit game. Well, it's an homage to an 8-bit games. And as you can see, it has limited color palette and limited sprite size. And these are the ways uh, the developers wanted to convey this feeling of nostalgia. But next, we have the different feeling, the different, the different flavor of nostalgia is 16-bit nostalgia. This game is called Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, also from 2014. And notice the amount of colors in the picture. The way this uh, picture is presented, the way this game is presented, is a lot more colorful, a lot more richer, and for some people, is a lot more pleasant to look at. That's why that uh, that's why there is a difference between 16-bit and 8-bit nostalgic. But also, you can go, you know, really crazy with it. You can do a freaking ZX Spectrum game, a game from 2016, Fist Row Fighter, which uses the uh, limitations of the ancient platform, really, in order to make something new, something creative. These are all nostalgic games. These games use pixel art to convey nostalgia. That's okay, but as you can see right there, nostalgia is not the only thing you can do with pixel art. Look at, for example, Hyperlight Drifter, the game that adheres to no limitations of the past. This game uses bloom, uses a, vi a variety of uh, colors in its palette, uh, usually secondary colors, if you see. Can you see it? Right? Okay. And uh, it has uh, lots of different effects. Or Megasphere, which is currently in development, it uses pixel art with uh, dynamic lighting, bump mapping, and lots of other things and features that are not usually seen and were, not, were never seen in pixel art games of old. Or look, for example, at Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery of 2011. This game you may like or dislike this style, but uh, you cannot deny that it has a certain uniqueness to it. It is recognizable. Speaking of Shovel Knight again, there's this uh, YouTube channel called Previously Recorded. You see it. These two guys talk about video games. They analyze them, they review them sometimes, and they ask the question whether or not Shovel Knight as a game has any value aside the nostalgia. Because frankly, uh, well, these four folks, they're pretty old and yeah. And uh, they're like, we know that this game is an homage to Mega Man, to DuckTales or Darkwing Duck and Castlevania. But what about kids? And they actually made an experiment with uh, a small group of children, like seven to 10 years old. And then they gave them uh, Shovel Knight to play. 
and compare it to the previous games, the newer platformers they have, like a new Super Mario Brothers for V for Wii and uh, what else? Rayman Origins, I believe. And kids loved it. Kids were absolutely amazed. They did fan art after playing Shovel Knight. Because, you know, frankly, first and foremost, you need to make a good game and then try to figure out the ways you can create uh, a compelling art direction to it. Which is also important, but if you don't have an engaging gameplay in mind, just, you know, you'll have a pretty looking game which nobody will play. Speaking of Shovel Knight again, um, this uh, particular case shows us, and uh, compared with Minecraft, for example, it shows us that a certain level of abstraction is really good in pixel art because it has a very limited set of, it has a very small canvas and a limited range of um, resolution and palettes. That's why through, this limit, through these limitations you can create something new, compelling, and abstract that children may enjoy too. Speaking of something other than games, uh, and what pixel art can stand for is all things digital. I mean, if you look at the older operating systems like DOS here, for example, you can see that the image is uh, created with the large pixels. You can use these uh, things in movies uh, representing fictional user interfaces, creating the digital feel. And of course, um, obviously, all things pixel um, create this video game vibe. When people in you know mainstream media, in the real world, when they see a bunch of pixels in the shape of Space Invader, they're instantly thinking, okay, it's video games. When they see Mario, it's, okay, video games. If you're a granny, you see Mario, you say, okay, I know this event or this picture tries to speak to me about video games, and that's really helpful if you want to convey something. Um, Widescreen wasn't really in my presentation. There was a nice image it's there, but okay. Speaking about why people choose pixel art. Okay, so we talked about the definition, we talked about the notions that are connected to pixel art, but now why do you want to create pixel art? There's this uh, idea that pixel art is uh, simple and fast and it's kind of true but is it? Because if you compare these two images uh, of Mario and of Venom from Marvel vs. Capcom, I don't remember the part, uh, these are absolutely different levels of detail and thus you'll have uh, you'll have different times uh, to spend on them, if you know what I mean. So, uh, for example, Mario character is like 16 by 16 pixels wide and tall, and that's why you'll like spend two hours on it. While Venom here is a really richly detailed character, that's why you need to work on it on days and days, and if you look at the uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night sprites, you'll see that uh, there's a balance strike somewhere in between. This isn't a large sprite, that's why uh, developers at Konami, they had a chance to create many different versions of it and create really detailed animation. That's why you need to strike a balance. Also, the speaking of level abs of abstraction and the reasons why people choose pixel art is the absolutely infinite scalability of the thing. Because, you see, if you're standing far enough from the image, you see that these five pixel over the pixels over there are face of the Alucard, but up close it's really a mess. But that's why it's so important to uh, strike a balance between the size of the sprite, the size of the pixels, and the detail level of the image. So pixel art isn't simple and fast 100% of the time, but it's simpler and faster if you strike a balance. So, I would say that the main reasons why people choose pixel art should be conscious stylistic decision, so that you really want to make a pixel art game, you really want to use uh, the ideas that pixel art conveys, 
and you want to uh, make your game richer because of it. And the second one is technical limitations because, frankly, even you know most recent um, handheld consoles like Nintendo DS or 3DS, they need to they handle mem memory really differently, and you need to scale down your production a bit to make your game viable on this console. So that's why you can choose pixel art in a way that uh, really you know saves your memory on the device mobile also but then uh, I had a slide about how there was a Mario asking how but okay let's go right away how do you make pixel art there's a variety of tools available on the net both um, free and paid and um, frankly I won't list them all you have Spriter you have graphic scale Photoshop all of these uh, software image uh, software editing editing softwares uh, are good. You can check out the Pixel Prospector Twitter. It has a list of very great um, pixel art editing soft, so go there. But what I would talk about uh, regarding how to make pixel art is the big don'ts of pixel art. Don't blur and don't mess up the scale. If, you're, if you really want to create pixel art, it's really important in any engine, being that Unity, Unreal, etc., etc., to um, establish properties for the sprites so that when you scale them up, they're not blurred as hell. You see, these blurred edges, they're no good for pixel art sprite animation. And of course, messing up the scale, um, the increments and the percents of scalable image should be you know, whole, not with, with, no, with no digits, no points, and so on and so forth, so that you won't mess up your image. The process of making pixel art isn't really that different from creating simple to digital, to the digital raster. For example, uh, I start with the shape, uh, go then to coloring, adjustments, adding some details, and really, what you need to remember is that um, your pixel art should convey the idea with the limited set of um, essentially pixels so that the final image would represent your idea perfectly. And really, I encourage you to explore. Explore as much as you can because, uh, frankly, there are purists out, th out there who think that pixel art is only old school. Like, you know, you can use only the true limited set of colors uh, that was, you know, uh, essential to NES, but really you have r such a variety of tools and methods and everything that I encourage you to explore greatly in various directions. For example, this right here on the left is uh, the game called Still Assault, which looks kind of 8-bit-ish, but it's not. And uh, really, people really invested in the uh, the development team, really invested in the animation, and it's currently ongoing. So I really encourage you to check it out. And also, the uh, game on the right is called The Duelist from former Blizzard devs, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the thing with it is that it uses, it combines several different types of graphics, like vector, raster, pixel art, you see there, there are pixel sprites on the simple 2D digital background with the lighting involved, shadows, and it creates this unique look which you instantly recognize. I encourage you to explore in 3D because, uh, yeah, there are a lot of things that connect uh, to the pixel art to the 3D. If you remember the early days of 3D games, uh, if you look at... I know, look up uh, the texture of Solid Snake somewhere on the web. It's like really simple uh, pixel art image with, you know, I don't know, four colors on its face. It's fascinating. So the software, the pieces of software I would like to talk about today is uh, Crocodile 3D and Magic of Voxels. Crocodile 3D is a really interesting um, program that lets you create tile-based uh, 3D images. So, for example, you create this tile set that consists of several squares, 16 by 16 or larger, 
and you just paint them on the axis inside the window. And of course, voxel. Voxel imagery is pretty popular today. And uh, uh, Magic of Voxel is free. And it's really easy to use to create voxel imagery. For example, these are you know 15 minutes to half an hour to an one hour sketches by me done in Crocodile 3D and Magic of Voxel, respectively. And you see, these are almost uh, complete uh, pieces of graphics. So these assets are absolutely viable to be added in the mobile or handheld game. So I really encourage you to create it and to use it fully. And then, of course, I encourage you to explore together. There are various different communities out there that have uh, that present you with the tutorials on pixel art, like pixel join, divent art, and really check the Twitter on by the hashtag. And you'll see the wide variety of pixel art styles and techniques within this movement. Because, uh, as I said before, explore, experiment, try to find uh, something that fits you personally. And of course, um, uh, I included the hashtag down there because, frankly, there are a lot more greater, great pixel artists out there than there are pixel art games out there, good-looking pixel art games out there. If you're a developer, if you don't know how to you know, draw and drawing isn't your just thing, I really want you to look it up and to connect to network because Frankly, uh, it's painful for me to see all these beautiful mockups, beautiful designs on Twitter, and uh, to know that these beautiful designs would not ever be created as a full-blown game. And yeah, that's really, really painful. But first and foremost, I really encourage you to put more effort than this. <laughs> because, yeah, frankly, um, it's okay to create your games faster, to, to, to prototype them faster, but it, if you cooperate with other people, if you find out the good artists out there in the net, or if you in, you know, increase your skills with pixel art, then I guess the success is all yours. And yeah, it was quite quick. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Yay. Uh, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Yes. What uh, What are your thoughts for the pixel art? Uh, is it something that uh, uh, we have a fashion right now, or is it something that, that will be with us forever, that will strive and, and uh, uh, we will be explored more and more? What's your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. I guess um, there are two sides to it. Of course, there is a trend currently, and everybody is making their own roguelike Metroidvanias. And um, it's something that is being exploited right now. And it's OK. Trends come and go. And maybe sometime in the future, in several years, uh, pixel art won't be as hot right now. I assume it will be low poly. Further down the line, if I may be mis I may be wrong, but nevertheless, um, but I think that the technique itself will stay with us really forever because uh, I don't know. Look at stained glass in churches, for example. This is one of the ways you can convey your images, you can convey your designs. Or look at I don't know mosaics. I hope. Yeah, bless you. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, so look at uh, these. Um, formats, these techniques, they are archaic right now, but they are with us still. And yeah, uh, I think sometime later in the future, pixel art may revive again. But now, I don't know, experiment, explore, do whatever you like. I think it's okay to do that. Yay. I wanted to ask about uh various algorithms for rotating pixel art because uh, making something uh, in isometric pixel art or uh, a sprite seen from side view is relatively easy 
but then there comes a time when you, where you have to rotate something. And do you use such algorithms as uh, pixel rot or eagle, or do you consider that cheating? Well, I guess that it really heavily depends on the type of project you're making. Because if you're making an homage to old 8-bit games, they were no, there were no uh, such uh, pixel rotating techniques, right? Yeah. Uh, but really, everything you need to make your work easier and uh, to uh, resolve the conflicts that you have in your uh, development, that's good for you. I mean, um, these are some of the limitations of 2D art in general, not just pixel art, because if you're making isometric game, there yeah, are ways that, uh, there are things that say, okay, n now you have to create 16 different directions for one sprite, for example, yeah? And it's kind of painful, but um, that's why if you look at, I don't know, games like Don't Starve, for example, it's not pixel art, but it, has, it uses 2D images in 3D space, and it's kind of top down with the side view, essentially, if you know what I mean. And uh, what they use, they use just simple sprites, 2D sprites, and they don't really bother with really uh, the great deal of directions. And uh, it works for them, it works for their style. So m my ideology in this way is do what works for you and then try to make it look cool. That's all. Thanks. No problem. Anyone else? You still have time for CD Project, yay! <laughs> well, yeah, I guess uh, that's it for today. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>